the vibe wraps into a piece with the ladies of Elegance! Woo! and it don't get no realer than Eloise. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, y'all, y'all gotta focus. The vibe is the real deal, and if we're gonna be on TV, we gotta kill it. Oh. Hello! What's up? It's your girl, Nija, and this is The Vibe. And I'm Gio. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're your hosts. Let's get this started. It's the season two finale. It's Pop the Topics. Um, today we've got Diamond Mumford, a junior MSP major at Temple and founder of the Philly-based urban entertainment blog, Black Affiliated, alongside Chris Jackson, a senior from the Bronx, aspiring recording artist, and VP of the Student Hip Hop Organization. So, Kendrick's music video for his single, Humble, recently went viral, stirring up a lot of conversation from listeners. One line in particular that had a lot of people talking, I'm so sick and tired of the Photoshop. Show me something natural like Afro on Richard Pryor. Show me something natural like a butt with some stretch marks. So I want to know what your take on this, these lyrics are. Did it make you feel some type of way? Um, I actually liked what Kendrick said. Um, it's good to, to see like an artist, I guess, like um, praising black women. And I think that's um, what I liked about it. And, you know, a lot of artists now, they just talk about like drugs or, um, girls that really don't look real anymore. Mm -hmm. So it was nice to see like an artist, especially like a black male, like uplifting like, black females. It's good. Okay. I'm interested to hear a guy's take on this. <laughs> so what'd you think? I mean, I definitely agree with Diamond. You know, like, I don't necessarily think it was controversial, if you know what I mean. Like, he's empowering kind of the natural look. Um, it's definitely way more controversial lines in hip hop, you know, like mm -hmm. Rick Ross's Molly and the Champagne. I feel like that's a little more controversial, but Mm -hmm. This one was more empowerment. He's actually saying, like, embrace yourself, embrace what you look like, and you don't need to change yourself. Hmm. So, so I, thought it like that. I guess, why do you guys think there was backlash? Why were people offended from what you know? Probably because, um, you know, fake fake bodies and, and women that look like, you know, Kim Kardashian and um, mm -hmm. Kylie Jenner, they're praised so much. People don't understand, like, what a real, they don't see, like, what a real woman looks like anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, um, like I seen like on Twitter, people were talking about Kim K's untouched pictures when she was in Mexico. They don't understand like real bodies is what they look like anymore. So it's like mm -hmm. these fake, fake um, bodies just there's praise now. So I feel like that's probably where the backlash mm -hmm. came from because of like our society and what our society thinks a woman should look like. But, like, you know, they should have all this long hair and wigs and everything. Mm -hmm that they think that's beautiful, mm -hmm. that means you're beautiful. So I feel like that's probably why it was so much controversy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I blame, I bl honestly blame social media, man. Yeah. Like you see you see all this stuff, like, oh, this, this woman's beautiful because she has these implants, you know, this because she has these shots, you know, butt shots or whatever. But mm -hmm. it's just like, it's like I said, it's, it's empowering. Like Kendrick, Kendrick does like, 
and he knew what he was doing when he uh, said this in his line. You know what I'm saying? Like he was able to really like show people like, look, you can be natural and still be beautiful and still, um, you know, like still have the look that people are gonna appreciate. So mm -hmm. that's what it is. Yeah, I know some people were concerned that the visuals weren't not necessarily matching up with what what he was saying. Do you think he did a good job of representing his message in the music video or? I think he did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and then the girl in the video, she looks similar to his girlfriend yeah. or fiance, or I don't know if they married, but you know, that's that's what he has now. So mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, it was a great representation. It's different type of women. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe he meant like not all, you know, makeup all the time, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it was more like natural beauty, like mm -hmm. so yeah, I think it was I I liked the video. I feel like it was a good video, it was a good representation and he didn't do too much. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. So overall, is there anything you would change, or if you could do anything better, what would you change about the video? Or do you think he did a good job just the way he did it? Uh, Kendrick's the best for a reason, man. Mm. He, he played that line well. He made it controversial enough for people to talk about it, but not some like not something for people to like kind of bash him on. So it was right it right in the middle. So I loved it. Yeah, what I would want to see more from him is he needs to keep doing that. Like, you can't just do that on one song and then expect it to, you know, like, okay, he uplifted women on one song and it's okay. Like, he should keep doing that. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, the kind people that had a problem with that video, they will start understanding what he's saying mm -hmm. if he keeps going on with it. But if he just, you know, leave it at that one song and really, like, don't uplift women anymore, then that's when it's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. So as long as he keeps doing it, what he's doing, it's, it's, it'll be good. Okay, consistency. I like it. Yeah. Okay. So both panelists made some great points so far, but this conversation is far from over. We'll be right back with Poppin' Topics, but for now, check out our correspondent Heidi as she puts a spotlight on Rec Philly. working with a lot of artists and uh, other creative entrepreneurs, people who can um, build an audience of their own and um, are just putting things into the world. We want to help people actually find like the sustainability to that. Hey, what's up? My name is Tim Montgomery. I'm the head of a &R here at Rick Philly. Um, as a head of a &R here at Rick Philly, you know, I have a like wide number of responsibilities. You know, um, we have this uh, three room layout here at the Emerald's Windows Factory on Knife and Dolphin. Um, my responsibility is kind of overseeing all three spaces, um, you know, helping to generate some uh, clientele for us. Uh, we also have, also have like a subscription service. Um, my role is to uh, scout uh, creative individuals who kind of fit the mold of what we're looking for, you know, and, and bring them all more to the program. My name is Scarlett Estelle. I am the Senior Account Manager here at Rec Philly. Um, as Senior Account Manager, I have the privilege of, you know, joining resources together for the creatives of Philadelphia. Um, between, you know, being someone who has worked that nine to five and has wanted to pursue that creative career, Rec Philly has really, you know, since two years since I joined, allowed me to uh, pursue my passions full time and hopefully be able to pass that success along to let other creatives pursue their passions full time but that all comes in culmination with um, you know the rec room where we're at right now where you know uh, our members and our strategic partners can come hang out but then also online what it means to be an account manager and joining those strategic partners whether you're in California or Pennsylvania together to you know really join those resources and make sure that people get what they need um, and make sure that they make those dreams a reality. Be on the lookout for Rec Philly as they get bigger and better. Until next time I'm Heidi Weaver and I'm giving you the vibe at Tim. Welcome back to Poppin' Topics. So last we left off, we were breaking down one of the most controversial lyrics from Kendrick's single, Humble. But now, let's shift our focus to Kendrick himself. People say Kendrick is held to a higher standard as the conscience of hip-hop. So do y'all think that played a part in the negative response he received? Chris, we'll start with you. 
Um, I guess you can say because he is a conscious rapper, you know, but Kendrick has always been like that. He's always like to stir the pot, you know, he goes against the grain, doesn't really like to kind of conform to what people like to hear. He's going to actually record what he wants to be, you know, put out there. So, mm -hmm. um, of course it plays a part, but, um, Kendrick, Kendrick, he's born to do this. That's just, that's what he is. Controversial. Like I said, he goes against the grain. So, mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think? Yeah, like as a conscious rapper, I feel like you should um, always touch on topics like this mm -hmm. because, you know, you're supposed to stir up controversy. So I feel like, you know, as a conscious rapper, that's what he needed to do. And, um, you know, listen to the album and listen to what people think about the album. I feel like he definitely did that mm -hmm. um, and caused, you know, people to maybe like think differently because that's what conscious rappers do. Like J. Cole did it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's other rappers that do the same thing. So I don't understand you know why it was so much backlash to Kendrick but yeah yeah so why do y'all think he is held to a different standard I guess comparing him to other rap rappers that are popular right now and huh um well like uh, there's really not many conscious rappers anymore mm. like besides Kendrick like Kendrick is like the west coast I call it, like J. Cole mm. so you know over here we have J. Cole Kendrick's over there yeah and that's really it so we don't really have anybody that's um you know stirring saying these topics that go on in the world, speak on like politics or anything, you know, mainly rappers talk about is drugs or dabbing and mm -hmm. anything <laughs> else. So that's mm -hmm. basically all rappers talk about. So, you know, um, he's the only one besides yeah. J. Cole, I feel like now. So, you know, we need artists like him to talk about these things because if they don't talk about it, then, you know, the people, People now are like encouraged and they, they get motivated by these rappers because they see their lifestyle. So it's like these rappers kind of like encourage people to think differently. So mm -hmm. if we have artists saying that, if it was more artists like that, people I feel like would think differently. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. exactly. Yeah, I can agree completely. Um, if you take a look at like uh, Kendrick's previous work, like you can see like he never wanted to tell you guys about a fabricated life. He never wanted to tell you about just something that you would think he like you want to hear. Like like I said, he's gonna he told a story his first album. The second he kinda went with a jazzy kind of vibe to go bring it back to like maybe the eighties or seventies, you know what I mean? And then he bring he comes back with this album and just totally like flips the script, like, look, I'm gonna give you something hot, but at the same time I'm mm -hmm. gonna tell you something different than everybody else because this is my viewpoint, this is like this is who I am and I'm not gonna tell you a lie. So mm -hmm. that's that's what I really think about it. Kendrick Kendrick authentic uh excuse me, I thought I thought uh, <laughs> authenticity <laughs> is is shown right there and yeah. it's prevalent. So Okay, yeah. cool. So do you think that as a conscious rapper, because he's kind of held to this standard that there's more pressure, I guess? Would you imagine more pressure on him to kind of make sure he's conveying these messages in his music as opposed to other artists? Oh, uh, yeah, pressure, definitely pressure. But, like, as an artist, just, that's always there, you know what I mean? And especially if you want to claim that you're the best, you have to live up to that standard. So as a, a conscious rapper, a lyricist, like, that's the, that's the standard you have to live by as someone who's going to give out knowledge. So hmm. that's what it's always been. Yeah, I don't think it's any pressure. I just feel like, you know, he's just being real. Yeah. Like, he's saying, like, facts, and, and he's being real in his music, and that's, you know, what people appreciate. So, like, nobody would, would want him to drop something that's not real or it's something that I guess they can relate to. So Okay. Yeah. Valid. Very valid. Okay, so both panelists had some really great things to say, but the conversation doesn't end here. Make sure you're keeping up with us at the vibe to tv using the hashtag BeHumble. Up next is the rap battle. You don't want to miss it. But for now, stay tuned to see which dance moves have influenced hip-hop culture in this edition of Hip Hop History. Hip-hop dance was born in Bronx, New York during the 1970s. Young African-American and Hispanic communities in poverty turned to dancing to combat gang violence, create unity, and bring meaning to their lives. Breaking or b-boying was the dance style that set the standard. Top rock, down rock, power moves, and freezes are all a part of breaking. The West Coast also played a part to the birth of hip-hop during the 70s. The West brought about funk styles like popping, locking, and the electric boogaloo. These styles started getting commercial exposure when two dance crews called The Lockers and The Electric Boogaloo started performing on the TV show Soul Train. But funk styles weren't always considered hip-hop. These styles came to be in hip-hop dance after confusion in the media. West Coast styles were being associated with East Coast breaking. The more popular these styles grew, the more hip-hop social dance came to be. DJs were spinning hip-hop music at house parties, in the clubs, creating the scene for social dances. 
The 80s brought us popular social dance moves like the Roger Rabbit, the Steve Martin, the Cabbage Patch, and the Running Man. Dancers like Buddha Stretch, Henry Link, Pop and Pete, and many others are considered the pioneers of hip hop dance. They're responsible for moves such as the Reebok, Smurf, and many more. Today, hip hop continues to be a popular dance style. It went from the streets to inside the studio, and now even big concert stages. The Stanky Leg, the Jerk, Two Step, Whip, and Nay Nay are a part of modern hip hop vocabulary. Whether you're a new school hip hop connoisseur or an old school OG, Hip hop dance is meant to bring people of all different backgrounds together for a good time. And we are back. The time has come for our rap battle. We have two rappers in studios uh, with us tonight. On my right, we've got Samaj. All the way from South Philly, up against Swayze from North Philly. We have three expert judges here to help us choose a winner, but let's get started. Samaj, you're up first. You ready? All right, let's get it popping. Yeah. They say, yo, James. What you about to do to the boy? I said, well, I'm about to teach him. See, I don't think that he understand what he going up against because he walked in here thinking that he had bars that was crazy. I said, who I'm going against? They said, oh, that boy Swayze. I said, wait a second. You mean the boy from the battle? The boy that he had to ride, but then I had to get the saddle? The boy who rapped like a baby, somebody get him a rattle? But I'm biting like a snake, so somebody come get my rattle? See, I'm about to show you how I flow, how I go. See, this my show. Everybody know that I got vibes. Everybody want to kill my vibe. Everybody want to be up on a track. Everybody want to rap, but they rap so rap, so they looking like that. And I'm sitting here about to take you like a tic tac. like it. All right. Swayze, you up next. You ready? Let's do it. All right. Bring the heat. Oh. Uh. So. 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 They don't really know what I bring to the table. You are not able. I look like Cain. I had to kill my brother. My mother is such a shame. Don't call me baby. That's the only girl name. Uh, that's the name that your girl call me. She gon' call me in the morning. You'll be mourning cause she gon' be at my house. Why you yawning all alone? He says Swayze from the battle. That's the one I won. Number one. You have just got sunned. I'm the sun, looking bright, super high, cause it's lit. You not it, you ain't ready. I got heavy, hella flows. Oh no, there you go, and I'm back up on my thing. You got a saddle, but you can't ride, cause you ain't got no Mustang. Man, not bad. That's it for round one. Tonight's judges, we have Professor Timothy Welbeck returning. We got musical producer James McQueen and Philly songwriter Chris G are all in studio with us here tonight. Um, we're just going to go straight down the line. Uh, Chris G, you want to get us started? I mean, so far, I definitely feel what they're both doing. Uh, personally, I mean, I'm feeling the flows from both parties, but I think I like Samaj a little bit more right now. Mm -hmm. So we're going to see how I feel later on, though. All right, yeah. okay. Uh, Mr. Welbeck? Yeah, I agree. Both of y'all started off really strong. Samaj, that was a really great opening. Um, you came ready, had some direct shots. Um, Swayze, I loved how you countered everything that he said. That was that was really dope. How you had something for him. I mean, you're right. I mean, like the battle you saw each other, you won. So, like, I mean, just some of the some of the things you had were uh, were great rebuttals. All right, and uh, Mr. McQueen. Well, like the other two judges said, uh, I'm really feeling both of you guys right now. Honestly, uh, I like how it was witty. I like how you came at him because you guys have history. I like how you guys got into that and explained and got descriptive with it. A lot of guys don't do that now. You guys just bark and, you know, don't have a bite back. But I really like it. I want to see a little bit of versatility from the both of you a little bit more, though. I like it, though. All right, we're All right, now, with that, we are going to jump into round two. Swayze, you're up first. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right, bring it, my man. Finish, right? 
you don't want it and you know that's fact bro you ain't even really ready to rap bro like it's christmas eve and all your presents still up at the store did you come to the battle you remember the last time you want more no you don't please back up oh wait no stand right there these shots way too direct they go go straight past your hair loop around like it's wanted no you do not want it i don't see no opponent i guess i'm too zoning elevated my mental not simple you play like a pencil you pimple i'm popping you ain't even really it's prom night you got no options you got one choice you say a lot of talk i just hear a bunch of noise what do you really want me to get grizzly like a bear you couldn't bear defeat if you had no shoes on you ain't really ready you should just move on i'm too cool i slide on and keep moving oh i'm still grooving i feel like i want to sing dance and do my thing turn it to a party because this battle ain't fair i'm too smooth like uh -huh. you good all right i like it all right samaj you up for round two you ready all right, bro, bring it, bring it, bring it. Bring it, bring it, bring it! Yeah. Yo, you think that I don't got shots? I'm gonna show my arm. I'm just scared to send mine. Don't want to hit the background. Photo bombs. See, I'm not trying to take out the inspectors, but I'm about to get the gadgets and show you what Mike and Wes do. See, I'm just trying to find it, cause I can't really hear it. See, everybody be sitting there taking beats, I'm trying to clear it. The music ain't too loud, so I'm just sparking it now. And I'm just trying to figure out if I'm going to hold it right down. Can't really tell if I'm on or off it, so I'm trying to figure out what the time is. So I'm trying to figure it out. I can't hear it right now, I'm trying to give them a clue. But they just going to watch me do what I do. <laughs> All right. All right, now we're going to throw it back to our judges for another opinion. Uh, this time starting with Timothy Welbeck. Yeah, so um, Samaj, you say you're always ready, and that's one thing I appreciate about you. You couldn't hear the beat, but you kept going. Uh, that just shows fierce competition, and I, and I appreciate your um, willingness to keep going like that. I, I think that Swayze got this one, though. And I, it's kind of unfair to you that you couldn't hear um, the beat, but uh, again, you had witty, and you had witty bars, you had personality. Um, yeah, you got the whole package right now. All right, and uh, my man, Chris? Oh yeah, I definitely agree with you 100%. I mean, I, I think that uh, Swayze definitely came in there. Uh, the flow was there, uh, the rhymes were there, very direct, very to the point, uh, very witty. And uh, you, I know you were having trouble hearing just what's going on with the beat and everything, but you still kept it going. But I have to say, definitely, uh, as far as this round goes, definitely with Swayze. All right, and uh, Mr. McQueen? You don't have any fear, bro. <laughs> I love you for that. No, real rap, a lot of guys don't do that. You ain't got no fear, and you gonna last long in it. I promise you, super, super, you were ready. I mean, I heard it, you are ready. I'm mad that you couldn't hear the beat. I really wanted to know what you would have said further if you would have kept going, even if they didn't cut the beat. Like, but you have no fear, and I love you for that, but I gotta give it to him for this round. All right, all right. Thank you for our judges. Now the final round is coming up where our audience will choose the winner, so stick with us. Now check out our correspondent, Kenny Cooper, who met up with rapper and producer, Kenny Sullivan, for our artist spotlight. I'm Kenny Cooper here with the Vibe at Temple here today with Kenny Sullivan. I'm an audio engineer, producer, and a recording artist. I own a recording studio on 9th and Dolphin called Park House Recording Studios, and I'm working on a couple different EPs and projects from various different artists um, throughout the city, and a couple people from the tri-state area, I would say. I think it started from me doing poetry in high school, and a lot of friends of mine always told me that I would be an artist, but I didn't think that was a career path that I wanted to go down. Somewhere in college along the lines, um, I wound up recording for a friend of mine and um, I didn't think that he was taking it serious enough so I started to record myself. I went to a studio, I felt like they were trying to play me so I started engineering myself and then um, after that it was just history. And it's music that isn't pop. I think for every era and every genre of music is always sub-genres, you know what I mean, according to the era, you know what I mean? So people just want to be relevant. And just because people are mumbling, people feel some type of way because they have a conscience. So they want to go back and forth. But 
I think good music just lasts and good music stands out regardless of what it is. Because mumble rap can respect J. Cole and I'm pretty sure some J. Cole fans can respect some of the mumble rappers, maybe Future or something. This has been a great interview with Kenny Sullivan. I'm Kenny Cooper giving you the vibe at Temple. All right, welcome back to the final round of the rap battle. We've got Samaj, we got Swayze, and we've got the final round. All right, Swayze, you up first. This is it, man. You got to deliver. You ready? All right, let's see it. There's a war outside, you didn't notice You was inside, trying to write bars That hocus, pocus, the magic You said that was gonna catch Swayze slipping But I'm standing all alone And right now I see you tipping like a scale I'm too heavy, you ain't ready, that's what they saying Slow it down, maybe I should say It's in a rhyme scheme you can understand I am number one, you are just like Stan You are just a fan, driving off the road You need to take it home Home alone, Macaulay Culkin, you talking, you ain't ready, you folkin', dancing, acting like you prancing, you an actor, but no, childish can be no, I would be childish not to gamble with the flow, so I gotta hit you like this, you ain't really ready for this, you should go home and go to sleep and maybe take some more hits of Tylenol, so you cannot be sick, cause you not that sick, and I am that piff, ooh. Not bad, not bad, not bad, you can't swing it. All right, you get the last word. You ready to deliver? Yeah. All right, my man. Let it up. Yeah, check it, check it. See, man, this kid said I'm not sick. But somehow when I spit, everybody start coughing. This boy said that I'm not lit. But I'm killing these rappers. When I spit, I put them in a the coffin. See? You about 5'6", I'm about 6'3", little boy, you look up to me You might think that you're lit, because your hat says it But as far as I am care, as far as I stare, as far as I'm glaring I can be staring you in your eyes, looking down Look at your size, look at your thighs, what are you doing, youngin? Oh my god, baby, I'm about to tell him something I'ma pee the pipe it when I go and come and get your sleet of slifer I'm about to catch you down just like a skyscraper I'm skyscraping, I'm scraping up in the skies And I'm just sitting here cutting this boy in half, I just divide it and now I'm about to subtract him from the fraction See, he be trying to get over on me He not a rapper, he acting See, he be sitting here going when I start snapping like a turtle Because you sitting there, listen to the words, boy All right That was some delivery right there, my man That was some delivery All right, now we are going to throw it to our judges For some last final thoughts All right, all right uh, My man Chris Final thoughts? I gotta tell you, I'm kind of surprised right there, man. You pulled <laughs> out like something special. Um, yeah, that that was really amazing. I really like what you did right there. Definitely very creative with you know the way you you entertain with those bars and doing things that were in pop culture. Uh, as, as far as uh, as you Swayze man, that flow was crazy that you were switching up and you had some dope bars in there. But as far as this round goes, I mean, Samaj just had that. Yeah. Right. Uh, Professor Welbeck. Another round, like just for, <laughs> just starting there. Um, Samaj, though, I, uh, you're fearless. Just um, just like my man James said earlier, I love that about you. I think you had the line of the night too. Um, that was a great rebound for you, um, Swayze. You've got some really intricate wordplay. The fact that you're doing that like in real time off the top of your head is amazing. Uh, if I had to pick one, I'd say Samaj got this round, but it's been a really close battle. I want another round. I know we don't got time for that, <laughs> um, but yeah, y'all did a great job. All right, and uh, Mr. McQueen, to finish us off. Ooh, jeez, I gotta say the last thing. Ah, all right. That was interesting. <laughs> that 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 double, that triple. You tried to do a quadruple time there. That I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know if y'all count bars like that. But I, that was, that was weird. Crazy. Yeah. Like I said before, though. <laughs> <laughs> you fearless. <laughs> that was what you did. I was like, it's disrespectful. You are absolutely fearless. You got, like, you went right at him. Right at him. No give. I like the wordplay. It was intricate. Got a little shaky, but then you recovered and came back with it. I like that. That's called fight. I'm going to give it to you for this round. But that was intricate, but I'm going to give it to you for this <laughs> round. <laughs> that wordplay. I'm not going to talk about this character and his flow, man. But the, 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 the flow was interesting. Definitely. You know, that freestyling, you know, off the top of the head. Amazing. Always impressive.
Always All right. impressive. All right, thank you from our panel of judges. But now we are going to throw it to our audience to determine the winner. So I need y'all to make as much noise as possible for your favorite. Let's hear it for Sim Marsh! <laughs> All right, let's hear it for Swayze. I think we got a clear winner here. Samaj is the winner for tonight's rap battle. All right, but um, boys, where can we hear your stuff? Starting with you, Swayze. All right, well, I'm SoundCloud. Uh, okay, yeah, they brought the mic back. Yo, I'm SoundCloud uh, Accessible. Search up Mad Matt Swayze, M-A-D-M-A-T-T-S-W-A-Y-Z-I-E. That's it. Or just search Mad Swayze like Patrick Swayze without the Patrick and Mad like you upset. <laughs> word, word. Good job tonight too, my man. Good job. And where can we find your stuff? Uh, follow me on Instagram, Samaj underscore F-C-H-W. And add me on Snapchat, S-L-I-M-M underscore J-I-M. That's it. All right, my man. And congratulations for winning tonight. Thank you. Thank you for showing up. All right, now, that's a wrap for our final rap battle of the season. Up next is our poetry spotlight. You don't want to miss it. Woo! Tonight's featured poet is a writer, performer, and teaching artist currently attending Temple University. He's a two-time International Poetry Slam champion who won Brave New Voices in 2015 and the College Union Poetry Slam Invitational in 2016. He's an African-American studies major with a minor in English. Through poetry, he wants to change how society views the black body. Introducing one of my best friends, Jamal Parker. If Colin Kaepernick's knees could talk, a nation weeps at my kneeling. A legion of white men wish they could break me. This black thing, the center of attention, a defiance heard round the world. They wish they could seize these legs like a colony, force them to stand upright like soldiers being sworn in. They wish I didn't plant myself on the ground like a black seed waiting for an uprising to, uprising to bloom while their song pollinates the air. They're upset at my buckling prefer I unhinge myself for ethics sake. Like a black knee didn't get capped by a pistol two days ago by a cop or a slaver under a hot sun. They act like the dismembered legs of a diaspora don't decorate their front lawns. My entire existence is either upholding a torso before it is lynched or before torso meets the pavement by gunshot. They ask what is more controversial, how I make white children question their forefathers how I'm not a valor or liberty for being defiant in this stadium and a game that they started. It will take more than ESPN's commentary to shake me loose. I have nothing else to lose but the blood that embodies this limb. How I might pour the blood on the ground when a white player sets his eyes on me. Tackle with the intent to injure the bone. Split the marrow like a white overseer enacting his revenge on a runaway. I learned massa binds a log to a Negro's knee to keep him from running. I am the pride of the black body, overlooked by arm and fist. I be a blistered thing, fathered by Adam, often bent in the name of God. The knee knows the damage of prayer and protest. Ask the black child who is beaten by batons all the way back to Jim Crow. Ask the black church congregation as they were kneeling and praying and a white man sees them with bullets. When they say take a knee, they mean summon all the divine and the damned and the names who have been forgotten and missed genocide. This patella don't bleed for the patriots. This tibia then trailblaze football field just to be stuck in a cotton mouth mentality. And if that bothers you, I will not move. You are upset at our kneeling, but not at the fact your anthem has left us amputated. We are the vibe at Temple. Temple University's first and only hip hop and music entertainment TV show. It's season two and we are back and better than ever. This season is packed with everything hip hop from rap battles to dancing and even spoken word poetry. You won't want to miss a beat. 
Vibe with us after the show at The Vibe Team TV on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat for everything The Vibe. Hi, my name is Chartel. I'm a singer, songwriter. I live in Philadelphia, and I actually came to Philly because of Temple. I'm a graduate of the Esther Boyer College of Music with my degree in classical voice. And ever since graduating, I've been pursuing music and pursuing a career in performing, and as of late, also in music education. And that's it. I'm happy to be here on The Vibe with you. Currently, I've done an arrangement of Prototype uh, by Outkast, one of the greatest hip-hop duos out there, and I remade it with uh, a gentleman, Anthony DiCarlo, who's an acoustic guitarist, um, and I am hoping to release a single, or at least a single, this summer, 2017. Um, I'm working on a nonprofit organization that I'm launching in June called Art Strings Foundation, and we're looking to give back to the youth in the same way that I feel like the teachers that I came up with gave back to me. So whether that's facilitating workshops and programs for them or just providing scholarship, I just want to be active and involved in the community the way that people poured into me um, because I didn't think that, I don't know, I didn't really think that music could be a career for me, but it very much has become um, a journey of following uh, performance opportunities and music education opportunities, and I just look forward to providing that to someone else as well. Tonight's musical guest is a Temple alum and was named the 2014 Best R&B Pop Artist by the Hip Hop Philly Awards. She's opened up for artists such as Aaron Camper, Selena Johnson, and Dion Kipping. She's appeared on shows like 106 in Park and the BET Honors. Here to perform her single, Prototype, Chartel. I hope you're the one If not, you are the prototype We'll tiptoe to the sun And do things I know you like I'm in love again If not, you are the prototype I'm in love again if not you're the prototype today must be my lucky day, baby, you're the prototype, let's do something like see a matinee, baby, you're the prototype, I'm in love again, if not, you the prototype I'm in love again if not you're the prototype if we happen to find Lord knows I don't want that no we can't be mad at God We met today for a reason. I think I'm on the right track. I'm in love. Again. If not, you are the prototype. I'm in love again. If not, you're the prototype. You're the prototype. Oh, 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 oh. I ain't never 
never seen nothing like you before. No. My nerves seem to go away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't never seen nothing like you no way. You're the prototype. Thank you. As always, special thanks to our performers, our guests, and the cast and crew for a phenomenal episode and a great second season. Without a doubt, this was the best season yet, and it only gets better from here. So keep vibing with us, and we will see you next time. <laughs>